You're listening to a podcast of Relatively Speaking on MPB Think Radio. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking, the show all about you and your family. And I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Do you have a hard time saying no to even even when you don't have the time or the desire to do something? Well, you're not alone. Maybe it's because you don't want to disappoint or anger that person. Maybe you're just one of those yes people. Well, today we're going to talk in a few minutes to a writer, Jenny Simmons, who is the author of a children's book entitled, I Can Say No. But I tell you, it's a children's book, but it has many lessons for adults as well. I read it, and I think it's awesome, and I personally, wish I had read it about 50 years ago. All right. So this morning when I was talking to my daughter, who happens to live in Nashville, where where our author is today, Erin, I was telling her about the show topic, and she told me that a friend of hers once told her, remember that no is a complete sentence. And I thought to myself, what a great thing. Well, I said that to her, too. I thought, it's so true, but many times we feel the need to add a long explanation about, well, why not? Or maybe we feel trapped to have a little white lie, maybe, because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Or um, if we really cannot do it, we have to make up some elaborate excuse as to why not, instead of just saying no. So if you're one of those pleaser people, you probably get this. It may seem really emotionally hard, that, that little word, to use it as a sentence. So, listeners, are you one of those people? Do you have some tips on how you learn to say no? Or are you one of those people who feels obligated all the time to give a reason, even if there really isn't one? Do you find yourself trapped in those little white lies, trying to get out of something you just can't say no to? Why do we do that to ourselves? What are the reasons? Well, as we go through the show, we'll talk a little bit about some of the psychological reasons that that happens to us. Um, You know, some people say no so, so easily. And there may be some, some truth to why that happens. There, there may be some real psychological reasons, but But some of that may be that many of us grew up to just be a yes person, yes ma'am, a pleaser, a people pleaser. It seems that maybe women are a little worse at saying an honest no and turn into yes people and people pleasers more than men. And I'd like to hear from both men and women about that. What do you think? So... Um, if, you know, so men probably say no more easily. Um, but if you are one of those yes people today might be a really good time to think about whether or not those yeses are getting you into trouble. And I think often those yeses do get us into trouble when we say we'll do something when we really either don't have the skill set we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the time, or we don't have the desire. And if you don't have the desire, obviously, you're not going to do a good job anyway. So those yesterday's yeses sometimes will turn into tomorrow regrets. So maybe we do need to learn to create boundaries on our time. No, I don't have time to do it today. Uh, That you don't have the energy no, I'm just too exhausted to tackle that right now. Or the need for privacy or space. No, I, I just really need some alone time. 
So, no, I can't do it. So have you ever gotten yourself overcommitted, overburdened, overtaxed, and um, just want to scream, but you're the one, you're the reason, because you are the one who said yes. Um, I can tell you I have been there. So this talk is for me, too. Um, listeners, join in. Would love to hear from you. I always tell you, you make the show. Give us a call at one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. A couple of quotes I wanted to read to you because I thought they were they're from very uh, well known people. Steve Jobs um, said, "Focusing is about saying no." I thought that was good. And Warren Buffett, we need to learn the slow yes and the quick no. Um, Two great quotes. Um, Almost as good as um, no is a a complete sentence. I like that one. All right. So why is it so difficult? Like I said, maybe we spend our childhood being told that yes, ma'am, is the right way to go. So today, I'm excited to bring in Jenny Simmons now to help us talk through the topic. Uh, Jenny is multi-talented. She is a singer-songwriter, the author of children's books. Um, The one that I want to talk about today is entitled, I Can Say No. And I'm excited about that. But she's also the mother of two daughters, a chaplain at a school, um, and she lives in Nashville, Tennessee with her family. So welcome, Jenny. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here today. And that was the best introduction to a book ever. (laughs) Well, you are so welcome. I'm just so impressed with you. You just have so much going on. But Jenny, I learned from my producer, Michelle, that you sort of have a backstory to writing this particular book. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? I do. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a lot like you and your description of having a hard time saying no. I grew up, I actually grew up in Mississippi. Um, I, oh. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I'm from Laurel, and uh, my grandpa was a professor at JCJC, and um, my other grandparents are in uh, Enterprise, Mississippi. So, born and raised, and you know, we're just we're taught good manners. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes. yes, sir. No, sir. You don't question mom and dad. You don't question adults. Um, and so, from a real young age, I just learned to be a people pleaser, and. Um, and I, I, I didn't develop those life skills of being able to say, no, thank you. Um, and so I have these, I have two daughters. And when my youngest was probably in third grade, she came home one day and she said, mom, there's a boy chasing me on the playground. And he's telling all the other boys, that if he gets me, he's going to kiss me. And I said, oh my goodness. Well, what are you going to do if he catches you? And she <laughs> went to me and she said, she said, I don't know. I don't want to hurt his feelings. And I was like, Oh, Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, you, have, you have got to be able to say no, you're going to say no to him. And she said, I, how do I do that? I don't, you know, she's like, no, I don't want to be mean, you know? And so I thought in that moment, here is this third grade girl who already knows that, uh, who, who's already contemplating whether to honor herself or honor somebody else above her, even if it's a, a situation that she's uncomfortable with. And so I just, you know, it was a sort of light bulb moment where I thought, oh, my gosh, I've got to teach my girls that they can say no, that they can value their own desires and wishes and personal space and be able to say a really strong no in that moment. And so um, that's that is honestly where this little nugget of a, of a children's story began, because I, I started to pay attention. And I really love that you talk about those white lies. Because she would, she would get invitations. You know, this this kid invited me to a birthday party. I don't really want to go. Can I just tell her we're out of town? And I said, no, because we're in town. You you don't have to go, but we're not going to lie about it. So how can we learn to say no in healthy, respectful ways that that honor you and your preferences? 
I think what a wonderful start for your children. And that is truly something that many adults have difficulty with. I'm telling you, we have um, our first caller and I want to get to Larry from Hazelhurst before our break. Larry, thanks for calling. I may have called the wrong number. I want to find out how to get MP radio on my iPhone. So it's oh. another number I need to call. <laughs> I can tell you, you can go to um, your, you can go to a podcast, MPB, um, any kind of podcast and go to mpbonline.org. Larry, we're talking about how to say no, but we can say yes to this. Um, I'm, I'm 84. And, I'm 84 and I don't know how, uh, anything about podcasts. How do I get it? How do, what is that? Well, actually, you can just Google. Do you know how to Google on your phone? Right. Or you can go to the App Store, and you can download the MPB app on your phone if you have an App Store. Um, Okay. Michelle is going to talk to you about this more right now. So, um, But, Larry, thanks for listening. I'm glad you're doing that. Okay, Um, so uh, let's go to our first break, and when we come back, I think I'd like to talk a little bit more about the child issue and how we are raising our children, Um, Mm -hmm. that maybe not teaching them well, because I have a couple of examples that I have from friends who got called on those little white lies. So we're talking Mm -hmm. about how to say no, how to do it respectfully, but how to take command of your own life and make sure that you are in a good space. We have author Jenny Simmons, who is going to stay with us, and we'll talk more about her book when we get back. But join in the conversation. You can give us a call at one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. You can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. This is Relatively Speaking, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, Professor of Internal Medicine and Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. On the original Southern Remedy, we answer questions about all aspects of your health and share some of the latest medical information in the news. You can listen to the show on Wednesdays at 11 on MPB Think Radio, or you can subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on your preferred podcasting app. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking and I am Dr. Susan Buttress and today we're talking about the power of no. How to say no. How do we teach our children how to say no respectfully, appropriately? And how do we as adults approach that? Sometimes not so good. So let's go back to the phones. we have Jennifer from Hattiesburg. Yes. Hi. Yes. Thanks for calling. What are your thoughts? Hi. Well, I was brought up, honestly, that it was kind of disrespectful to say no. Um, my parents were, were from Peru, South America, so basically, especially being a, a girl, our choices were limited, and so they kind of taught me that if something was needed, it was my duty to do things. So now I'm, like, over-volunteered. I'm in charge of so many things. Like, right now, my one day off. I'm trucking dogs from Hattiesburg to Starkville, back to Flowood, back to Starkville, back to Hattiesburg. Oh, so this wow. is a very good topic for me because, like, I blew two cars out um, because I put so many miles on them trying to help with these dogs. And it's like an unending need. There's never an end to it. So it, I feel guilty to say no, but, I mean, like, there's only so much I can humanly do. I'm exhausted. Wow. I am so glad you called, Jennifer. And I, I will tell you that this is a trap that so many people get into. Uh, Finding a good cause, figuring out that this is something that is so needed, 
And, and the honest truth is you will get used up on something like yeah. this. So, yeah. Im oh. right? Important to I draw a line. Um, burned out. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, it's not good for anybody and certainly not, not good for you. Um, Jenny, do you have a comment about this? Yeah, I do. I'm so glad you called, Jennifer, because I have functioned the same way as you for a long time. And I think you said something really important. You said um, uh, something to the degree of, you know, it'll never go away. Like, the need is always there. And I think yeah. that's a really Im important first step in understanding that we can work every second, every minute of, you know, whatever we have to give, and the need is still going to be there. And so for me, that actually frees me up to realize, even if I worked every single second for the rest of my life, I still couldn't fix this problem. Then that means that I need to be able to step back and realize there's nothing I can do alone by myself to, to, make, this, um, to make this completely better. And so this is a team effort, you know, it's a, it's a collective, there are people all around us who can say yes so that we can say no and rest. And, and I think we can't, you know, we find those things that we love and we can't um, bring our whole self to it and our best self when we're exhausted. Exactly. That's such a good point. So Jenny, this is what you need. Here's a technique that you can, can do a couple of things. You can draw the line and say, I can only do this on Fridays. So that's mm -hmm. the only day of the week. Or I can only do this twice a month and here are the dates that I am free. So that mm -hmm. you start like drawing that. a line, very committed to the cause, think a lot about yeah. it. Um, if you feel the need, you can say, I just can't do it. I have three other things I need to do today. Or I just can't do it, mm -hmm. I'm exhausted. That is okay to say. And um, for people who, who are such pleasers, sometimes a good thing to do is go stand in front of a mirror and practice mm -hmm. those words in front of the mirror. Look at yourself. Look yourself in the eye and say it. Say no, just no. I cannot do that. And, you know, I think you'll become a much happier person. Um, I... I remember the day um, that that I said yes to to every position, every office, anything people asked me to, and and um, and you get to a point where what you just said was so telling. I'm exhausted, and then what happens as far as your effort? It's not a good one. You end up not giving it your best. Now for you, trekking up and down the road. I would worry about your fatigue too, Jenny. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. That's true. Because I've been having just after driving like 12 hours, had to just lay down because I felt like vertigo from driving so much. Yeah. You know, Jennifer, I was going to say there's one of the things that really motivated me as I was writing this book. I actually came across a New York Times article of three professors at New York University who said they had a really hard time saying no. And they got asked to do more than their uh, male colleague counterparts. And so they actually started a club, and they call it the No Club. I mean, these are grown women with PhDs <laughs> working at a university. They have started the No Club, and they come together because they say, you know, sometimes we have a hard time making that decision for ourselves. But if we lay out our schedule in front of our friends, in front of our colleagues, and say, should I say yes to this thing, then we have outside eyes that kind of look and say, no, no. And so... Um, they practice saying no on one another. They run decisions by one another. And one of the ladies said, she said, you know, I, I think about it sometimes and I think, would I ask my daughter to keep this pace? Would I ask my, you know, my best friend to keep this pace, my mother to keep this pace? And if I wouldn't um, ask somebody else to keep that pace, then I probably shouldn't be keeping that pace myself. Exactly. So give it a try, uh, Jennifer. Take care of yourself. Know that if you aren't taking care of yourself, then you won't be able to do a good job. One other thing that I have found in almost every organization that I have been in is that whether it's church or a professional function or a school function, 
you will find that it's the same people over and over who get tapped and who volunteer it is. because it is right over and over and over again. It's like crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. And so it's okay to step back and say, you can say, no, I think it's time for someone else to take, take over that position or take mm -hmm. over that job. So mm -hmm. give it a try, it's practice in the mirror, okay? And I would well. love for you to give us a call back and let us know if you were able to do that. It sounds like I this will. is the week to start. For you, it is. I'm gonna get that book too. Is it available on Amazon? So I can do read it on my it Kindle. Is. Okay, yep. perfect. Can you restate the title? Because I was, I heard it, and then I was like, I don't have any paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. It's just I can say no, and that you can go to the okay, website perfect. I can say no dot com, and it has all the links to where you can purchase it. Okay, I'm going right now. Thank you so much, ladies. Yay. I appreciated this conversation so much. Y'all are godsend. Oh, I'm so glad you called in and that you were listening. And that's so, why I love my MPB radio, because y'all always have everything I need. <laughs> <laughs> love <Really>. that. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Be safe in Thank your you. drive. All right. Well, listeners, we have open lines. You can give us a call at one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. You can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. We would love to hear from you, whether you want to tell about how you've conquered um, your yes all the time or, or how you maybe are struggling with how to say no. You can give us a call. There are plenty of those yes people out there. Why don't we talk a little bit about sort of what goes inside um, why people continue to say yes, even when they shouldn't. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think one, one piece of it sometimes is um, just not wanting to disappoint someone, uh, not right. wanting, if they are excited about you, perhaps going somewhere with them mm -hmm. or joining in, going out to dinner, um, mm -hmm. Jenny, how much do you think that plays a part in just the the not wanting to hurt or disappoint someone? Mm -hmm. I do. I think that plays a, a really big part, um, which is why, yeah, which is why people say yes, and then they don't want to be there, and they're starting to feel resentful, they're tired, they're feeling a little bit bitter, but they also didn't want to let that person down, and so then they've let themselves down instead. But I do think there's that that desire to please that motivates a lot of yes people um, and that's a hard one to work through I think one of the ways I found to do that for myself because I, I very much have that that part of it in me um, is to be able to sort of give a compromise like you know I can't do that tonight because I'm exhausted I would love to do that with you in the future could we get a, a date on the books now I'm not available to help with this at this season in my life but I, I would love to do this down the road. Would you, would you, you know, reach back out to me at a different time? Um, so I think finding some ways to, you know, not necessarily justifying, you know, or giving an excuse for it, but just saying, you know, this is something that, or I, I care about you. I love you. And I wish I could do this. You know, I have to do that with my girls a lot because my girls are sixth grade and a four-year-old and they want me to play all the time. And I want to play with them. I love them. And also, I'm in grad school, and I'm working, um, and I'm trying to cook dinner and take care of them and pets. And you know, so sometimes I have to say, I love you so much, and I wish I could do this with you right now, but I can't, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones. We have Catherine from Mobile. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for calling in. Hi. Um, I just have a comment on the topic. I, too, am working on saying no. Um, Good. <laughs> but mm -hmm. when I um, talk with patients, I'm a social worker and I provide therapy services, and one of the things that we explore is where does your work lie? Like, if you yeah. say no, does it mean that someone doesn't love you or do you feel like mm -hmm. the relationship is going to be cut off? And if so, mm -hmm. are we maintaining unhealthy relationships for the sake of keeping love? which isn't really well. 
Um, and so that's something that we talk about all the time. And I think about that with myself. Why am I stressing the yes when no would be so much easier? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. I, I think a great point is where where is that where is that relationship? I I like that point, and I think um, Catherine, that's exactly what a lot of people need to remember is if you cannot say no to someone without being fearful of their anger outburst or their rejection of you, then it's clearly not a good relationship. And so I, you know, I was, as I was preparing for this, um, uh, to you both Catherine and and Jenny, I, um, I started thinking about, the the ways to respond when someone is angry if you say no and i think it's okay to say um don't please don't talk to me like that don't be disrespectful to me i'm trying to take Mm -hmm. care of myself to draw the line i think that is Mm -hmm. one thing we so many times have difficulty with so, Jenny, any comments to to Catherine about that? I'm grateful you called in, Catherine, and that, that social worker sort of mindset and piece is important because I, I do think a lot of people learn to say yes when they really want to say no because they've come from a trauma background. Um, they, they've they been scared into saying yes, and, um, and, and deconditioning from that is really hard because sometimes that's meant your safety. And so I think it's important that if you're hearing this today and you're, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I, I say yes all the time and I want to say no, you know, there, for some people, that, that's a deep part of how you survived as a little kid. Um, and mm-hmm. so I, give yourself some grace and some mercy as you learn. But it's okay that safe relationships um, are spaces where you can say no without being threatened. And if you can't, then you're not in a safe place and, um, and, and getting the support you need to sort of back yourself out of that is really, really important. Absolutely. And thank you for your profession. I think that social work profession is such a noble profession. Um, only very caring people go into that. And so Catherine, I hear it in your voice. We appreciate you. And, um, thanks for, thanks for calling. Thank you for all you do. I love your show. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, it's time for our next break. We'll take a break. We have open lines again, so you can give us a call. We're talking about the power in saying no and how that can take better care of you. Give us a call. Join in. Talk to us about the difficulty or how you've conquered the ability to stop always saying yes at one eight seven seven mpb ring that's eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four or you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org this is relatively speaking i'm dr susan buttress and we'll be right back this is an mpb think radio podcast On Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, you get information about foods you should eat to stay in good health and tips on how to stay active. I'm Dr. Josie Bidwell, host of Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit and Associate Professor of Preventive Medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Listen to the show every Monday at 11 or subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy with your preferred podcasting app. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, and I'm here with author, writer, singer, um, Jenny Jenny Simmons, who wrote the book, I Can Say No. And we're talking about how do you do that? How do you do that when you care about people and you're a people pleaser and you feel the need for people to like you? How do you make it through all that? So we'd love to hear from you, your thoughts, your questions about this. one eight seven seven mpb ring is a number you can call. That's one eight seven seven 
672-7464, or you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. So, um, Jenny, I yes. want to pull our producer, uh, Michelle McAdoo, in because I will tell you, I have talked to Michelle a couple of times about her inability to say no. And Michelle, <laughs> talk to us a little bit about why, during the break we were talking just a little bit about why, why you have difficulty with that. And, um, and, and you brought up a good point. And I think I've noted to you that I've had some difficulty. And, um, and maybe it's secondary to the fact that um, we are in that people service industry. Um, you know, you're, you're a licensed counselor. I'm a, a developmental pediatrician, um, you know, social workers, psychologists. Maybe I wonder. Do we have more trouble with that? Yes, that's what we were talking about during the break. I um, uh, went back to school and got my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. Uh, Ms. Catherine just called. She's a social worker, nurses, doctors, people that are in the helping profession. I think we have a little more we have more issues saying no because we want to help people. That's what we want to do. But I was um, talking to, with uh, Jenny before the show, Jenny, you and I have that uh, similar background with the military father and just, you know, people pleasing, wanting to be liked. And that's one of the things I realized that I have an issue with. I don't want people not to like me. Who wants, who yeah. doesn't want to be liked, you know? So, yeah. so when I want to catch that. Call yeah. Call yeah. Call Actually, we have Pam and... from Golden, Mississippi holding, and this is another call as well. Um, we'll get them in just a second. Hold on one second. You guys talk about that helping profession and how we can, I just want to know my question to both of you guys is what are some other things that I can do to empower myself to say no? Um, I know we have to dig deep within ourselves when it comes to, wanting to be liked and how do we get over that you mentioned Jenny that some of some things that happen in your childhood will cause you to continuously say yes because of fear of saying no and things like that but sometimes this is a deeper deeper situation and your book again was so refreshing to read it's not just a children's book it spoke to me in volumes um and like Dr. Butcher said at the beginning of the show, I wish I read this, what, 47 years ago <laughs> or 40, 40 years ago when I was seven or something like that. But, you know, you, you, you want to be like you want you don't want people to say, well, she can't she she never does this. But I end up getting into a trap where, where I'm always saying, yes, DJing and hosting events for my daughter's school. I was the PTA president at the same time in graduate school. And uh, some of my coworkers <laughs> up here said, I don't see how you're even still standing, but <laughs> you did it. You know, yeah. you just keep going. And again, how do I get out of that? Um... Well, but what happens is some of those behaviors get reinforced because they say, oh, I don't know how you do what you do. You're amazing. You're awesome. So those accolades are reinforcing the behavior that pay maybe you don't need. I don't know, Jenny, thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, so I have, I feel like I should win an award for how many years I've been in therapy. So um, this comes directly from my therapist. <laughs> but she says, she always says to me, Jenny, you teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to treat you. And, and we do that. So we reinforce those yeses in ourselves, but we also, re we also teach people that we're their yes person. And so mm -hmm. I think some of the dance is, is stepping out and being able to say, you know what, I have been that person. I don't, I love you. I want to be here for you. I want to be supportive, but I'm going to have to insert a no in this. And when we change the dance with people, um, when they've expected one thing from us and we start to do another thing, they're going to protest a little bit because they right. counted on you to do the hard stuff. <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, and I thought about that too. I think when we were talking to Jennifer earlier, you know, I think sometimes people say yes, because there, there's this part of you too that um, is like, well, if I don't do it, nobody's going to do it. And, and another thing that I've learned through being in therapy for so long is um, that that's really enabling people to not have to do the work. 
And so sometimes I take on their work for them. I don't give them the chance to shine. I don't give them the chance to step in and be the PTA president if I'm like, well, nobody else is going to do it, so I'll do it. I don't want to. Um, And so I I think we teach people how to treat us and how we will say yes and dishonor our own boundaries. And then we, uh, we also sort of steal that away from them and that opportunity for them to grow and for them to step up and for somebody else to fill in those shoes if we're always that person. That's a good that's a good way to think of it. I do agree. I think you're you're using up opportunity and occasionally I will hear in an organization that people are a little bit frustrated that the same person is always doing things and they don't get the chance. So think about that. I love the change the dance with people term because I agree I think once you you change the dance you set a new stage or a new table then then it's hard for people to understand okay let's go back to the phones we have Pam from Golden Mississippi hi Pam I do not know where Golden is can you tell us where that is it's right on the state line for with Alabama oh okay all right well tell us your thoughts Well, my thought is really simple and a little bit different. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's the telephone. We cannot say no to the telephone. And I don't carry my phone with me anymore. I decide who I call back when I talk. That changed Mm -hmm. my life. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. I... I applaud you. Um, yeah. Tell us how you, what, what got you there? Uh, it just seemed like I was not in control of my time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't able to say no to somebody asking me to do something because it was a spur of the moment kind of thing. And, and this mm-hmm. just compounded and compounded. And I realized that I could put my phone down and I could answer it when I wanted to. I don't carry my phone with me. Um, Mm -hmm. It's this had just gotten out of control and caused me Mm. to answer to someone else when Uh I really, if I had some thought about it, I would not do that. Yeah. That goes back to that quote I, I read earlier from Warren Buffett, we need to learn the slow yes and the quick no. And I think that's something you have to, if you say yes, you better think through why you're saying yes and if you really have the time and the ability to do it and the desire. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay just not to have the desire to do something and to just say no. And um, I'm speaking to myself, honestly. And anybody who is listening who knows me well knows I have a great, great difficulty saying no. But this is good for me. So we're therapizing each other as we move along. (laughs) That's a good I think Sam made a really good point about recognizing what, where those moments are that are hard for you. So I think if you're listening and you're wondering, how do I practically do this? Think through it. One of mine was, I am terrible at buying things from people who show up at my door. I'm like, do not let me answer it. If they've got encyclopedias or they've got new lawn care service, I'll, I can't say no to it. <laughs> and so I, the, the moment I finally realized, you know what? I don't have to answer my front door just because they're knocking doesn't mean I have to open it. it was, I know that seems so simple, <laughs> but it's the same thing with the phone. Once you realize I don't actually have to engage that thing, it's still hard for me to say no to it. So I can give myself some space and put the phone down or not answer the front door or whatever to not, not go to a dinner party. If you're having a hard time staying away from alcohol or you, you find in those lines where this is where it's hard for me to practice a no and so for this amount of time, this season, I'm actually just not going to engage it. Right. Exactly. Well, I, uh, great points. And I, I think not answering the door, not answering the telephone are ways to, to protect yourself. Give yourself a little space, a little time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think it's okay. 
you know, one one thing I do like is the the ability on our smartphones to be able to say, can't talk right now. Can I call you later? Um, I think mm -hmm. it's okay to do that, even if you are not on the line with someone else, if you're just not up to it right then. It's really okay. Thank you for, for that um, brave leap that you took, Pam. I'm really <laughs> proud of you. Yeah. All right, let's Thank stay you. on the phones. <laughs> we have Elliot from Collins, um, who's next. Hi, how are y'all doing today? Hi. Great. Thanks for calling, Elliot. What's well, going on? Good. Talk to us. Well, I've thought about this kind of thing for many years. I, I, I used to have a problem a lot more with trying to please people. And I think uh, to put it on a nutshell, we have to look internally versus externally um, for, for satisfaction, if you will. Um, I think, again, as we're a child, we tend to learn, look outside of ourselves to the approval of others for clues how to be and for signs of happiness, and, and we become dependent upon that. But hopefully over time, we internalize uh, parts of the world that we want to include within us, and hopefully as we develop spiritually, we internalize um, a lot of our own happiness so that even in times where there isn't much happiness, we can look within for clues mm -hmm. about it. And so that, I guess, if that makes any sense, I think in order mm -hmm. to um, help us to say no a little bit easier, is it really demands, puts a demand on us to look internally, to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. can I be happy even uh, mm -hmm. if I don't have the approval of everyone? Is it necessary mm -hmm. for me to have the approval of others in order to be right. okay with the world. Uh, mm -hmm. it, to me, there's this unconscious dimension of the internal versus external. And mm -hmm. can we internalize enough of our control of our own happiness to resist yeah. uh, some of the, you know, uh, us compromising ourselves, if you will? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'm so glad making you, you called me some that. really good points. And just the learning to be happy and pleased and accepting of yourself. That's loving yourself and not needing those outside accolades or praises or acceptance. But if you know you're doing the right thing, to know you're doing the right thing and to be happy with yourself. Look in the mirror again. And tell yourself you're good, you're okay, you're what you need, and and no one else needs to tell you how you need to be. Jenny, I know you have a comment on this one. I heard a lot of uh huhs on from your part. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm amen and in the background. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I I think this is the heart of saying no, and so I'm so glad you mm -hmm. called it this because you know we can learn different strategies and practice different things, but. But no comes from when we realize I am enough the way I am, and I um, and I don't I can I can disappoint people if I have to. Um, I can not go to a you know for this book's for kids, so there's parts of the book that talk about if I don't go to a slumber party, if I don't say yes to a you know a sports team audition, different things like that. I'm still okay, and I honor myself enough to look at my own preferences and boundaries and values and dreams and make my decisions based off of that and not those external voices. And, um, and I had this, a spiritual director once told me, I'm a person of faith. And so she said, I was, it was a season where I was totally burned out. I had been overworking, saying yes to everything. And she said, would God be just as pleased with you if you moved out to a little cottage by a lake and just tended the garden the rest of your life? And I was scandalized. I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> I have got gifts and talent and people need me. And, this, and, you know, and she said, but really, do they? Like, you know, she said, I'm not saying you, you just check out from society and never do anything. But she said, I am saying you need to wrestle with if you can't get to the point where you realize that your life absolutely holds the same amount of value and the same amount of worth and dignity if you just tended to a garden by a little cottage. 
and that would be enough. And she, she was like, then, then we have some work to do because you're not grounded in a place where just you as a person, as a human living and breathing have worth and value. You're finding that by saying yes yeah. to other things. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, I bet you were scandalized with all your talents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? In the next few minutes, what I would really like to do is for us to talk a little bit more in summary of knowing that it's not easy to make changes, but they're the learning how to do that slow yes and the quick no can be really important for our lives. And we've heard from several callers, thank you so much, um, at how, how they've either struggled or how they've learned to better take care of themselves. So let me just, I'm going to read a few phrases of how you can say no. And then I'd like for Jenny to give us some parting words, but okay. When you say no, you don't have to be mean, and you can say it softly and kindly. No, I'm sorry I won't be able to go with you, but thanks so much for asking me. No, I can't do that right now. I would love to, but I just don't have the time. No, I can't drive you there, um, but if you need a ride, I can probably give you a ride after 5 o'clock. So there are those ways that you can say that, Always the kindness in your voice, the tone in your voice makes a huge difference. So, Jenny, other thoughts about that? I love that. You know, I, I, I think what you're saying is so helpful because I think one of the biggest uh, drawbacks or hurdles to say no is that we just don't know how to sometimes. And so I've Googled, you know, you can Google how to say no. And it's so fun to look at the different ways to say no. And one of the things that I learned about my daughter you know, in writing this book was that she really didn't have any practice. And so I just want to remind people, uh, saying no requires some practice. You're not going to be great at it the first time. It's going to, especially if you're a people pleaser, it's going to feel, you're going to feel awful. <laughs> you're going to be right. like, I am so mean. I can't believe I just did that. Making boundaries is hard. It's hard work, but it's work that is worth it. It protects you, your soul, your energy, your your kids and I think if we can teach kids that early that yes you can do it respectfully and kindly and protect yourself so that you can invest that energy in places that really matter to you and that requires practice and so practice with your kids if they're in a difficult situation at school with friends on a team with a coach role play that what are some ways you can say no to this this kid how could we respond in this situation I think sometimes as adults it's easy to lose our patience with them and so you know try your best not to shame them like you know what's the problem just say no you know I think for people that uh, are great at saying no they look at some of us and they're like I don't get it um what's wrong with you right right yeah right what's wrong with you it's it's real hard and so (laughs) practicing that getting some support for that you know one of the things that we're doing with children is we're using this these professors from New York University and their model the no club and we're encouraging kids to start a no club at school where they practice oh i like it well jenny simmons um author of i can say no thank you so much our show's over it went too quickly so if you'd like to hear the show again or any past episodes you can listen to the podcast on your podcast app by searching southern remedy relatively speaking this show is a production of mpb think radio and our engineer of course is the beautiful michelle mcadoo i'm dr susan buttress and i hope you'll join us next tuesday at 11 for relatively speaking and stay tuned for npr's here and now coming up next right